Is astrology a guide to aid us in mastering the universe? This is the Cosmic Community Podcast with Galactic Ambassador Stacy Dredd. It is a big week in the astrology. We are coming off some pretty hot energies and moving into a brand new month. And so I want to be able to get to all of December's astrology after breaking down this week and chatting about Mercury entering shadow phase. We've got Venus making some contact with the South Node. Mercury entering the sign of Capricorn and also B- Venus moving um, in, out of uh, Libra into Scorpio. So lots of energy shifting this week. And um, so Mercury entering the shadow phase. Mercury goes into a retrograde cycle three to four times a year. And this is a retrograde means the planet appears to be moving backwards in the zodiac uh, from our vantage point here on Earth. And so that in terms of astrology, a retrograde is about going back and redoing things and reviewing and restructuring and making edits. And so when when Mercury or any planet enters its shadow, what it means is that we are in that time period, we have entered that uh, territory where the planet is going to be doing the reverse and backing over. So this is like the first first of three passes that we're going to make here um, in the end of Sagittarius at the very few last degrees, the last five degrees of Sagittarius, and then also the first degrees of Capricorn is where this retrograde is going to take place. So we are not done with Sagittarius business, even though Mercury will be moving on on December 1st into Capricorn. Mercury is the planet of our mind and of our communication and of transportation. And this is communication via uh, talking. This is email communication. This is text messaging. This is phone calls. And when Mercury is moving quickly in a direct fashion, all of those things work really well. Our mind, our communications get from place to place. Our transportation, no problem. We're moving about. And Sagittarius is a fire sign. This is a big energy. This is like a directed, confident type of energy. So Mercury, our communication and our mind has been on fire and communicating and not afraid to say things. Sagittarius is the sign of honesty and of just kind of like laying the truth out there and not even in like a really koofy way. Like this is like, I'm just going to be blunt about it and like throw stuff out there. And so, over the last couple of weeks, Mercury has been working within the energy of Sagittarius, um, speaking the truth, just going ahead and saying things. And we've also had this hot, hot energy of the sun and Mars in a conjunction and traveling close together. We are still feeling this energy. And this is also in the sign of Sagittarius. So fire energy is big right now. There is a lot going on within terms of exploring um, the grander vision and not being afraid to dive into some new adventure. Sagittarius energy is all about um, just going and traveling and this like idea of going into foreign lands. And that can be physically moving into foreign lands or like taking our mind into foreign places or our communication into these places. So if our mind has been like really wandering a lot, this is a, this is a, a theme of Sag- Mercury in Sagittarius, the mind wandering. It's like the ultimate space cadet energy. Um, Sagittarius represents like higher thinking and higher thought and like education education, like higher education. And so it can get lofty and it can get spaced out. Um, But now we're moving into Capricorn and this is a much more grounded energy. This is an earth sign. 
So our communication is going to start to get more grounded later in the week, starting on the 1st of December, as Mercury makes his way into Capricorn, we'll begin to slow down there, and we're going to be rethinking some things uh, over the next few weeks in terms of uh, that Mercury retrograde. So uh, this report is for November 28th through December 4th, and then I'm going to uh, move into the the later parts of December um, there at the end of the show. But um, as far as this week goes, um, other than Mercury moving into shadow, we have Venus at the forefront of the energy this week. She is already, as we speak, in this conjunction, which means that from our vantage point here on Earth, we look out, we see that these two planets are lined up exactly directly. Although she's not lined up with a planet, Venus is lined up with a mathematical point that astrologers use called the South Node. There's also the North Node. And this is a little technical, but it's where the elliptical of the Sun and the elliptical of the Moon tie up together. The original meaning of the word node is not. So this is where the elliptical of the sun and the elliptical of the moon actually would join together. And, and this is a knotted feeling. And so this is an area where we get tied up. This is like a feeling of something very strong happening. There is a pull here that if you pull on one end, it should, you know, pull and get tighter on the other end when dealing with a knot. And so, with the North and South Node, they're just known as destined points. And so, anytime that a planet comes into interplay with the North or the South Node, we have faded destined things happen in life. This week, Venus, in this conjunction with the South Node, is putting relationships. Venus, she rules relationships. She rules love, relationships, money, our trust and value systems. And the South Node is representative of the things that we are trying to leave and walk away from in our life, things that are trying to, we're trying to say bye-bye to. And so, this week could be a very destined week for relationships. There could be breakups. There could be also just like, hey, I no longer see this as a part that I in my life that I want to value, you know, that value system, or mm, there's something in my life that I no longer want to spend money on. You know, we're trying to quit something or cut something out. Something's trying to leave our life in terms of Venus themes. And so, relationships are absolutely a, a key theme here. And the South Node and Venus are going to be making this conjunction at 22, 23 degrees of Libra. So, we're looking at our own astrological birth chart and going, okay, where's 22, 23 of Libra? And do I have any points there or planets, or um, what house is this in in my astrological birth chart? Just to see, like, where this energy may be playing out in your own personal life. That's where we look at that natal chart and find that point, and then determine, you know, what what kind of part of what part of our life, which house, you know, this can be taking place. And so, interesting stuff um, there in Libra. Libra is the sign of relationships too. So that's why I think this is a very destined point for relationships. There could be just some kind of like a new contracts being made around relationships. Um, there could be some contracts being thrown out in terms that Libra is the representation, represents as a sign contractual agreements. And the law, there could be some interplay with, um, you know, some, some law contracts, you know, like maybe in terms of, you know, uh, yeah, you fill in the blank there. I mean, I just kind of like threw Row the main themes out, and then you know you get to determine and and work with this energy how it feels right to you. And so Venus then comes into a quink onx just very soon after. I mean, this is all happening at the same time. Um, her conjunction with the South Node, and then she comes into this quink onx with Neptune. 
Neptune is another big player this week. Neptune is the planet of illusion and delusion and of mysticism and mystery and also of love, unconditional, unexplainable, deep, deep love. And that's the kind of love that Neptune represents here. And so this is the higher octave of Venus. And Venus and Neptune have a special relationship, but this is a tough, tough aspect. A quink unks is not easy. And and so there is definitely this tough point with Venus in the middle of the week this week. And like I said, we get to kind of choose our own adventure here, knowing what the energies are. And then as we move into December, I already mentioned that Mercury sets up for that um, retrograde, moving into the sign of Capricorn on December 1st, starting to slow down a little bit and traveling through the uh, shadow phase there, moving into the 1st of December. And over the, the first weekend here, the 2nd and 3rd, there is a lot of movement. It, it's busy. This week, Week. This whole week is pretty busy. There's just movement every day, and there are aspects and things happening just about every day, along with the sign changes, which just changes the focus, you know, with Mercury changing new signs and then Venus changing new signs. That that changes our personal focus, you know, in life. And so we we um, have some time to kind of adjust to these energies. And um, on Saturday, it's pretty smooth moving. We've got um, on December 2nd, a trine uh, between the sun and the moon. And then we also have a sextile between Mercury and Saturn, which is pretty good. You know, Mercury is starting to realize the work that's needing to be done during this retrograde cycle. And so Saturn is the planet that is like all about responsibilities and what we need to take responsibility for and how we need to, you know, work with the ambition in our life and sort of take the bull by the horn. And so there's a good conversation happening there between Mercury and Saturn about healthy responsibilities and healthy reactions and responses to those responsibilities and things that, yeah, there are, there's a lot coming up in our near future and just accepting that and moving into it with grace. And then on December 3rd, there is another quink angst between the warrior planet of Mars and Jupiter. And with quink unxes, it's just like an annoying aspect. There's not really a lot that can be done. It's not like an active trine or even a square where when there are planets 90 degrees apart from each other, a square energy forces action and we can at least like do something to respond. But with quink unxes, they're five signs apart, which is 150 degrees. It's just like kind of disharmonious and there's just there's no action that can be taken. You just kind of have to sit and deal with the irritability around it. And Jupiter is the sign, I mean, excuse me, is the planet of like making everything big and optimism and also good luck, you know. So um, I feel like there's kind of like a uh, where is my luck on Sat on Sunday the 3rd of December? Like, oh man, I, I thought I was going to have like better luck luck than this or, or something like that. There's also a square between Venus and Pluto, which is a little tough um, also on December 3rd. Uh, with all of the action that Venus has this week, you know, um, coming into a square with Pluto can actually be really nice because as I said, the square forces action. And right now Venus is like, I don't really know, but I need to let go of something and some things are happening in my life and I just, I need to respect Respond. And so there could be like a almost like a, a lack of understanding of how to respond with the Venus Quincunx Neptune and that you know, kind of murky, foggy uh, feeling that Neptune brings in. And then with the square with Pluto on Sunday, it's almost like something becomes clear and we start to um, take action and, and sort of move in the in a in a new direction. And then um, she Venus is moving fast. She she quickly separates from the south node and with this quincunx with Neptune. And on December 4th, she moves into the sign of Scorpio. 
And this is a hot place for her. She becomes an alchemist here. And just because Scorpio is so sexy and deep and dark, she becomes like this really kind of like dark feminine figure here. Like, I don't dare I say dominatrix, but the closest thing that she can kind of like, she's like, kind of wants to bring out the red leather is when Venus is in Leo, but like the black leather is for when Venus is in Scorpio. And so she brings out the black leather and the darkness. And this is like a healing place for her too, because this is where we can go deep in our emotions. Scorpio is an emotional sign. And so we have an opportunity here to explore, you know, where we're at and where maybe just recently we had something taken taken away from us that south node and and we're having trouble sort of bringing you know some clarity around it well Scorpio is going to help us to dive in pretty deep and start to find some understanding. And also, it's going to help us to go purposefully into these dark places. Venus is always, always benevolent. And and so, this is going to bring about deep understanding. We're going to bring some really deep love and healing to these areas that Venus represents in our life. Love, relationships, value systems, money. And then moving into December on the 6th, we have that planet of Neptune stationing direct. Neptune is extremely quiet this week. And I mean, Neptune is not moving. When you have planets stationing retrograde or direct, they they basically stop. They look like they stop in the sky and then change directions. And this is when we feel the planet's energy the very, very most. Neptune is the planet of mystery and is the planet of creating these kind of situations where we are almost wrapped up in a world whirlwind of um of of our own sort of mystery making it's like a we are really kind of wrapped up in a place sometimes with neptune where it's maybe hard to see out there's like a murkiness to it and when neptune stations direct everything sits still and that murkiness fades away and it's like those murky waters become clear again and so neptune stationing direct on december 6 is going to bring about some really nice clarity that isn't normally available with Neptune energy. And then later in December, we have that planet of Mercury, the planet of our mind and communication, moving into retrograde. So we're going to have a very still Mercury. This is happening on the day of the new moon in Sagittarius. New moons are all about quiet and still, and a stillness of the mind. And with Mercury sitting very, very still on this day, this is going to be such a beautiful, quiet moment in the month of December. We all know how crazy the second couple weeks get of December with the holidays and the kids getting out of school and with so many events and things that need to take place. And December 12th, the new moon in Sagittarius is going to be a beautiful opportunity to slow down and breathe and to see things a little more clearly with the mind sitting still and maybe just to slow down on some of these communications that have, you know, you've, you, we've been working real hard, getting things planned out. We've got our lists made. We've got some, some of our plans actually set in stone a little bit and we're able to kind of chill out a little bit mid December here with this new moon and Mercury uh, retrograde. So I love this time. This is a gift. This is a gift from the universe. And this week is going to be beautiful to check in with how are we doing forming this grander Sagittarian vision? How are we doing with sitting still at the top of the mountain and allowing the view to come clear? 
to us. When we're caught up in the whirlwind and everything's moving around us, it's hard to see past all of that. So Sagittarius new moon brings us an opportunity to sit still and just enjoy the view. I'm excited for that one. And uh, then quickly, Sagittarius season is over on December 21st when the winter solstice hits strong. That's the day that the sun moves into Capricorn and we have the shortest day of the year and the biggest amount of darkness. And this is the quietest time of the year and that new moon in Sagittarius, Mercury retrograde. This is going to be a really big beautiful, quiet time. And then we have Mercury coming back into the sign of Sagittarius the following day, December 22nd. And we're going to be doing that reviewing process. We're going to be going back and, and doing some edits and um, re removing some things and, and relocating other things. And it's going to all happen just in time for the holiday. And then we have Chiron stationing direct the wounded healer. On the day of the full moon in Cancer, that's December 26th, the day after Christmas, and then on the 29th of December, Venus moving quickly through the sign of Scorpio and entering Sagittarius just a day before the ruling planet of Sagittarius, Jupiter stations direct. So that's like a lot of stuff going on at the very end of December. And so we're really going to have to like revel in this mid-December time around the, the new moon on December 12th and that Mercury retrograde where we're going to have an opportunity opportunity to let our mind rest a little bit. This week is definitely still moving strong. We've got a lot of activity going on, a lot going on in relationships with Venus's um, potent activity this week with the South Node, and then her moving into a new sign that is going to kind of dive her in pretty deeply into some of the themes that she's been going through recently. Planet stationing, retrograde, direct. It's a busy month in December, and I will be here through it all here in the cosmic community. I really appreciate you being tuned in today, and I hope you have a really good week and introduction into a new month, and that Sagittarius season is just really firing up for you well. And I will talk to you next week. Thanks so much. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Community Podcast. More can be found at kpov.org slash the cosmic community.